Okay, so this is actually my second time recording this. I recorded the last one in a bit of a rush, and I wasn't happy with the results. So uh, now I've done a bit more preparation, and uh, hopefully this will come out much better. So what I wanted to talk about today is um, running a cheroot on the phone. This isn't a new concept by any means. Um, many people have done it before. Um, really what I wanted to achieve this time around is actually make it practical for me. Um, so I've been playing around with it for a few years. Um, this was my first sort of attempt at actually making it um, something that I could use on the go. It was kind of cool. Um, hardware restrictions ended up sort of um, stopping this, but it was quite cool. You can sort of see it still uh, running there. Oh dear. There we go. You can see that's still uh, running away there and doing its stuff. So that there, this began with me taking a Debian installation CD image uh, doing lots of adaptions to it and making that go. I had to mount directories, dev, proc, sys, um, all of that type of stuff I needed to mount inside, plus anything I wanted to give access to the root. I needed to have root access to do this. This was my second real go playing around with it. Um, it was quite uh, interesting because on this phone, this is a Jolla, or Yolla, whichever way you like to pronounce it, um, and on this you actually get um, you get root access out of the box if you want it. You can just turn it straight on and then you have it. This is another attempt. Um, I'm just using uh, Android on this. Um, I'm using Android 4 point something. Um, at this point there are some limitations, I think in the kernel, but it could actually be the mount binder itself. But that stopped me from easily doing um, a mount of an image um, using minus O loop. Um, so what I did to get around that was I ended up creating a petition on the SD card and I uh, just mounted that instead. I was able to make that all go, that was cool. Uh, by the time I'd solved that, um, I was facing other sort of issues like the keyboard, um, while being fully featured, it's um, not a particularly nice keyboard for typing on and um, um, the screen size and everything wasn't particularly practical at that point. Ah, so the bottom line of that was that I'd lost uh, I'd lost momentum um, on that. This one here is where I first started to make some actual progress. Um, so all the way here, we're still looking at running images or petitions, and it's the same here with this one. Um, by this stage, I'm on Android six and I've sort of learnt a fair bit along the way here and um, I'm liking the keyboard, it's not as fully featured but I was able to make do um, and I used this over a period of about six weeks or so and I was doing real programming on it. Um, I wasn't doing my work on it um, but I was doing my hobby stuff on it and um, uh, I got used to the small screen size, um, it was very consciously still a hindrance but it was usable for what I was doing at the time. So while that was uh, during summer holidays, um, and therefore sort of when I was in car journeys and plane rides and that type of thing, um, I still wanted something that I could use more practically more often. So when I got back, I started uh, playing around with, well, hey, what apps are available that can do all this work for me already? Because there's no, I spent quite a while getting that working well, getting it all scripted up and getting everything working the way I wanted it to. But uh, maybe there's apps which are available which uh, can do all this work for me. Yes, there are. This is one, um, and they call it Debian. Um, Debian is actually a Linux distribution, and I think basically what they've done is... Um, um, it is Debian under the hood, and then they've done all the pvroot work and everything for you there. And they've configured it a very specific way. They have um, provided a lot of interesting stuff about setting the uh, DPI of the um, that the software is. That's a long conversation. They've done, they've done a lot of work getting everything uh, set up uh, for you, and you can f configure things. It is incredibly slow on all the hardware that I've tested it on, um, and things are very well set up, but they're, um, they're set up in a very different way to the way that I want to use them. Um, it felt like everything I was trying to do, it felt like I was going against the grain. So I ended up not going any further with this. 
That leads me on to this little fella. Um, you'll notice if we put it beside here, it's a larger screen than what I was using before. And this is where um, I've really got momentum going now. Once again, Android 6. I've been doing a lot of my um, hobby at the moment, programming um, on here. It's working really, really well. Um, so what does this setup look like? I'm using uh, GNU root under the hood. Um, so that, uh, and I'm using Debian Wheezy as the uh, base image of it. I want to upgrade all of that fairly soon, but uh, that's what I'm using right now. I played around with uh, Wheezy X, which is basically where it starts um, an X VNC session for you. Um, I found that didn't really work very well with my workflow. Um, so I ended up going back to the Debian uh, Wheezy, and then um, I took care of scripting all of the VNC stuff myself, and I've got that working really, really well. GNU Root provides a few other base images as well. Gen 2 looked really interesting, and I'm really keen to actually take that further at some point. Hardware requirements is an interesting thing here. All three here have one gig of RAM, and this one here has one gig of RAM as well. Um, I suspect this one here has been set up to work well if you have like two or three gigs of RAM, maybe a bit more. And that's probably why that runs so freaking slow. Um, because it's just it's probably just running out of RAM. These three here, um, I've managed to get those working quite well um, on uh, one gig of RAM. As soon as you're running something like WhatsApp, it starts to really slow down. CPU-wise, um, none of these are particularly powerful. It was good enough for what I was doing. Um, you can see it um, runs VNC quite happily. Everything behaves um, in a nice, responsive way. Um, which which is good. Um, now, whenever I mention VNC, uh, the f the thing that people always then ask is, "Oh, you're talking to a remote server?" No, I'm not. I'm the VNC server is on the phone itself. Um, I will, however, come back to this topic a bit later in the video. This then brings me to uh, this phone here, which was when I decided that I wanted to uh, get rid of um, using my laptop every single day and only just use it for when I actually need that much horsepower. Um, I wanted to see how much horsepower I, I could actually get in the phone. Um, so I ended up going for this one. Um, it's a Le Echo Le Max 2. Um, so 6 gigs of RAM, 128, megs of, uh, 128 gigs of storage. That runs really well. Um, RAM has not been an issue in any way whatsoever um, for the stuff that I'm doing. CPU, um, it's not as fast as I expected it to be. Um, it's certainly not slower than that, um, but it's... Um, I'm not getting the performance that I expected. One of the things that I am really noticing is uh, forking a process is much slower than I expected, and I suspect there may be a throttle in there to make sure that if there's any app which isn't behaving well, then uh, it gets throttled. I think that's what's happening um, in there. Um, I've certainly found that as I've been optimizing actual um, to do less forking to achieve stuff, it is um, running much, 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 much faster. I think I achieved about 10 times uh, speed performance by uh, reducing the amount of forking it was doing. So it's a significant uh, uh, difference. And then I've done other things as well and I've achieved much more, blah, blah, blah. That's for another video. Practicalities of the hardware. So you can see here, some of these have keyboards, some of them don't. So let's start with the keyboards. Keyboard on this, um, um, you could search for a book or two on this. Uh, that's what it's designed for. Um, using a console, it's technically possible, it works, it's not fun. It's not fun beyond the first uh, few minutes. Keyboard on this, I mentioned before, um, is quite um, the feel of it. Um, your fingers don't feel good after doing quite a lot of typing on this keyboard. Keyboard on this feels absolutely lovely. It misses a lot of the characters that you need for programming and for um, on the command line. When I was firing everything up to actually do this demonstration, um, it was really nice using this keyboard again. So yes, um, if it wasn't for the lack of um, keys on here, I would um, be quite happy using this keyboard more. Um, on the flip side, if I'd continued using this, um, I probably would have ended up uh, rebinding a lot of the keys so that in combination with this and combination with that, I'd get all the missing characters. 
I was able to make do with it as it was, but it certainly wasn't a fast process to do programming on that. And I ended up doing copy and paste to uh, speed things up. Keyboard hardware on this. This is the thing that lets this phone down. It's the hardware. So no physical keyboard? Fine. Most phones don't these days anyway. The keyboard on screen um, really didn't gel with me. And as a sort of parity check, I got one of my workmates to have a play with this. And for him, the keyboard on this was absolutely fine. So um, that comes down to personal preference. I wanted to fix this by hooking up a Bluetooth keyboard to it. That uh, worked beautifully for a number of seconds. And then the device would uh, disconnect. Um, quite often, whatever key was down at the time when it disconnected would end up repeating and repeating and repeating, and it would stuck and get stuck until the Bluetooth driver would be able to get stopped, and then it would be able to, uh, then I would be able to stop the repeating key, which would mean that I'd have uh, maybe ten or twenty lines of an S or something like that. My patience ran out for that after a little while, and uh, I didn't get any further with it. From what I was reading online, I wasn't the only one to have that problem. And just to finish that story off, uh, there were at least three keyboards that I tried with this, and all three had the same problem. This is a fold-out keyboard, and I uh, use that with this, and it is absolutely marvellous. In the Google Play Store, there is an app called, I think it's called the Hacker's Keyboard. Um, that is really good for making do, like if I'm sort of in a, a moment when... Um, like if I'm walking, if I'm standing on the train or something like that, the Google Hacker, so the Hacker's Keyboard is um, enough to make do. Um, but whenever I can sort of sit down somewhere, um, having the fold-out keyboard is really nice. Um, the alternative which I've been using is this. Um, this is a compact full key size USB keyboard. And then I've just got a USB-C um, to USB-A adapter on there, and um, that also works really well. This is this is even more luxury. So at that point, um, the only thing that sort of really gets in the way um, here is screen size, and so I've actually. Um, I'm getting around that at the moment by sort of having things in physical locations so I know that, well hey, if I'm doing this thing here, then I'm here. And then if I want to go and uh, test it, I'm over here. And then if I want to go and modify some config, I'm over here. And if I want to search through the source code, I go here. And if I want to do something completely irrelevant, I'm over here. So that's working really well for me at the moment. Um, I'm still fiddling, I'm still refining, uh, but this setup's working quite well. So the original goal from all of this was to be carrying just one little thing, rather than carrying um, that, plus um, two or so kgs of laptop. Now, if I then carry around lots of devices, and dongles, and adapters, and all sorts of things, it won't take long before I make the same weight as that, but a whole lot less convenience. So that is something I'm repetitively testing and just making sure, am I actually still better off or am I uh, getting close to the same amount of weight as before? And so far, I am a long way better off than um, I was uh, carrying the laptop all the time. At the moment I'm still carrying the laptop just in case, but I've been thinking in the last few days that I think I'm about ready to be not taking the laptop with me every day. I've got a note about security on this. So there's a few different aspects to this. There's always that whole thing of when you're using someone else's app on the Play Store or wherever, when you're relying on other people's stuff, have they planted in something dodgy there, which is like taking uh, keystrokes, capturing the passwords and stuff? Are they uh, looking for your SSH keys? Are they doing all this different stuff? I've invested enough time to gain confidence in the choices that I've made. Um, I haven't gone and looked through every line of source code. Um, I think I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the direction that I'm going at the moment. Uh, but it is a very definite, um, conscious decision. The next one is having an extra factor of authentication. Um, so Google Auth is what I'm thinking about at the moment. This is something that... Um, the idea is something that you have. 
if the something that you have is the same thing which might have your password manager or some of the little bits and pieces um, on it which could help uh, a would-be hacker uh, getting into your account, having it all on the same device undermines um, some of that security. Therefore, at the moment, I don't have Google Auth on here because the whole intention of this was to use this as a, basically a complete desktop. This leads nicely onto uh, that whole VNC question from earlier on. Because as I, as I said, almost always, whenever I mention the VNC part of this, people then say, well, aren't you just connecting to a remote server and using that? And no, I'm not. I'm running everything locally on the machine. It has occurred to me multiple times that yes, I might want to run stuff on the cloud, and up until recently the answer on whether or not I wanted to was always no. And that was because I wanted to have everything locally. My commute, I have a reception about 40% of the time when I'm uh, commuting, so uh, all the rest of the time, all that time would be wasted if I was uh, VNCing to a remote server. However, on the times when I'm on call, when I'm actually dealing with whatever the problem is, I need reception. So, for my work stuff, it actually makes sense that a remote server may not be such a bad way to go. So then the question comes, is what do I gain by doing a remote server, and what do I gain by doing it locally on the phone? Doing it locally on the phone, I have a reliable setup that is there all the time. I can load it up at any moment, and I'm not dependent on having a signal, so I can keep working while I'm not, while I don't have a signal. The advantage of having a full server doing all of this for me is performance. It's purely performance. Um, and, uh, oh, actually you no, know, I can add a little bit more to that. It's performance, but it's also internet connection, in that uh, my internet connection just has to be good enough to convey a desktop. It doesn't need to be good enough to download um, two gigs of stuff um, through apt-get. If I do it on a remote server, then all of that can be happening while I'm disconnected from the uh, VNC session. I come back a couple minutes later and it's downloaded everything and I'm away laughing. Just before I touched on the practicalities of keyboards and um, screen size and that type of thing, Coming from a perspective of ergonomics, I've got to be quite careful there, because a laptop has uh, quite well-defined ergonomics now. We know sort of roughly where things need to sit and where the keyboard needs to sit and everything. If I'm doing something a completely different way, then I need to be thinking about um, these things. You, you probably can hardly see this at all, but that has led me to this. This will be in another video in the future. Um, this gives me an easy way of putting the uh, phone, thus the screen, in a position that is good for me to be working with. The uh, fold-out keyboard can then just go in a convenient place on the tray table in front of me. I think that's enough talking for one day. If you have any questions, um, feel free to leave them under the video.